They say beauty begins the moment you decide to be yourself. But how are you supposed to achieve that beauty when you're still on the process of searching for your worth? When you're still on the process of searching for your value, your importance, and all the reasons for your actions. How much do you exactly view yourself? Maybe you're still wondering, or maybe you're still lost and confused just like anybody else out there. But don't worry, because today, I am here to help you out. So buckle up, and let's discover more about you. Theories of self-development. It is discussed that the various social scientists have a different ways of looking at the self. Just like George Herbert Mead studied the self. A person distinct identity that is developed through social interaction. He felt that it was important for an individual to be able to view themselves through the eyes of others. Kind of Charles Coley. Perspective of Self-Development The Looking Glass Self Through this theory of self-development, we learn to put ourselves in someone else's shoes and look at the world from someone else's point of view than our own. He explained that it is important to have self, to be able to imagine how we viewed by others. I feel that this theory best explain my personal socialization because as I continue to grow older, I still sometimes wonder how I am perceived by others. I wish I could see myself through the eyes of the people that hang around me because I know it is way different than how I see. Self-development is especially important for college students. It helps us to learn new life skills that could mature our minds for life after college. Next, we have nurture versus nature. Nature refers to all of the genes and hereditary factors that influence who we are, from our physical appearance to our personality characteristics. Next, nurture refers to all environmental variables that impact who we are, including early childhood experience, how we were raised, our social relationships, and our surrounding culture. The initial use of the nature versus nurture was credited to the psychologist Sir Francis Galton in 1869. However, it is unclear who initially described the impact of genes and biology versus environmental influences. Good day everyone! This is Nalisa May and Aero from Accounting 1C at your service. And today, we're going to be digging deeper down on your understanding about yourself deeper than the ocean and wider as the sea. Because now, we're going to be discussing all about fruit psychosexual theory. Oh, but before that, let's get to know more of our beloved Sigmund Fruit first before proceeding to his well-known theory, shall we? Because, you know... It's 1 a.m. in the morning right now, and he'll probably gonna haunt us in the middle of the night because we'll fail to introduce him to everyone. So without further ado, let's watch this video. 
Working in Vienna at the turn of the 20th century, he began his career as a neurologist before pioneering the discipline of psychoanalysis. He proposed that people are motivated by unconscious desires and repressed memories, and their problems can be addressed by making those motivations conscious through talk therapy. His influence towers above that of all the other psychologists in the public eye. Many of Sigmund Freud's ideas do not hold up to today's modern science, and his clinical practices do not meet today's ethical standards. At the same time, he sparked a revolution in psychology and society, and created a vocabulary for discussing emotions. 100 years later, how do we exactly view his theories? If you are really interested to know, then you better keep on watching. Alright, awesome kudos, well done. Sigmund Freud, one of the most prominent psychologists, really did an enormous impact on the study of the self-concept through the field of psychoanalysis. When we say psychoanalysis, it is what we call an approach or study of human psychology which emphasizes the complex reasoning that goes beyond our minds. In other words, it is what we call a method of analyzing psychic phenomena and treating emotional disorders that involves treatment sessions during which the patient is encouraged to talk freely about his or her personal experiences and especially about early childhood and dreams. So if ever meron kayong kahilala or kapatid, kaibigan, no, na meron mental disorder, stress, or depression, they need to consult a psychologist and undergo a psychoanalysis. Alright, going back to the topic, Freud emphasizes the significance of early childhood socialization. For him, it is really crucial or important uh, in the development of basic adult personality, which can of course be established as early as 5 to 6 years. So imagine that one. Freud's psychosexual theory, what is it? exactly all about well you know guys I, I know you already have an idea about it we have the so-called three subsystems we have the id ego and super ego which all influences the way we think of ourselves in different situations phenomena or scenarios so if you're familiar with Gollum or Gollum, the alien like in Lord of the Rings, the one with the round big eyes, his body is too thin that you cannot even see a hint of fat calories on him. Well, he's our guest for today's discussion to show you how it, ego and super ego go well together in one single character at the same time. So buckle up your seatbelts, relax and together let's watch this video. Look at the sleepy campers. I'm sure they have lots of food. Or yes, I should steal their food so I can eat it. I'm so, so hungry. Go ahead, steal it all from them. Ed, this is wrong. Don't steal their food. Yes, we need the precious foods. They won't even know we took it. Don't steal. It's not right. I don't care what you say. Nobody likes your super ego. You shouldn't do it. Please don't ask to everything, whether you're dead or alive. Ah! <laughs> oh, stop. Why don't you ever listen? I don't need you, ego. I'm a thief. No, why won't you let me save us? For all these years, I've saved us. We've survived because of me. Not anymore. What did you say? We need to find the middle ground. Listen to me and Super Ego. What? If we're still now, we can never come back. No, we can kindly ask them and maybe they'll help. Help us? Huh? Wow, I almost stole from them. But Ego helped me and Super Ego wasn't that wrong. I can nicely ask the campers for help and maybe they will give me food. Hello, sleepy campers. Please help me. I'm so hungry. The it is present at birth and represents everything that we inherit from our parents. It is what we call the source of our desires and impulses and therefore the primary component of our personalities. Ipinakanakapalang kumbaga na dyan 
This unconscious part of our psyche operates on the pleasure principle and seeks instant gratification no matter or with no regard for consequences or reality. So when we say it, it is what we call the pleasure-oriented, with of course the objective of seeking pleasure and avoidance of pain and doing what we want to do. Like what we've watched in the video I've presented a while ago, it primarily involves hunger, thirst, and any basic needs to survive. Sabi nga nila, when we say it, it is what we call our animalistic self. We seek instant gratification for our wants and needs. If these needs or wants are not even met, we can either become angry, tense, or anxious at the process. The ego arises from the id and is developed as a result of our attempts to fulfill the id's needs. It operates on the reality principle and serves as a mediator that strives for a compromise between what the id wants and what the outside world can grant it. When we say ego, it deals with the reality. It is too realistic, trying to meet the desires of the id in a way that it is socially acceptable in the world. This may mean um, somehow delaying gratification and helping to get rid of the tension the id feels if a desire is not met right away. The ego then recognizes that other people have needs and wants too, of course, and being selfish is not really good in the long run. Kumbaga, um, every time na magtitake ka ng decisions, um, yung ego yung tagapamagitan nun. Uh, kung susundin mo ba is id or yung super ego mo. It makes the decisions that dictates our behavior. The ego also considers social realities, norms, etiquettes, rules, and customs when it makes a decision on how to behave. It seeks to delay gratification, sabi ko nga kanina, to appropriate outlets can be found. It uses the secondary process thinking to avoid negative consequences from society. The superego is our morals, principles, and ethics. It considers the social standards for social behavior and guides us on what is right and what is wrong. The superego begins to develop between us in 3 to 5 years of our age and is mostly shaped by what we learn as young children from our parents and other adults. Eventually, we accept this training as part of who we are. We put pressure on ourselves to live up on how we think we should behave. When we say superego, it arises from the ego and acts as an internal representation of the moral values of our environment. The superego then judges what we should morally do or not to do and guides us about the shoulds and should nots of our lives. The superego rewards us with pride and positive feelings upon doing good and punishes us with feelings of guilt, shame, or fear of not abiding by values that we have set for ourselves. Let's put it this way. Your id is your demon, your superego is your angel, and you yourself are your ego. At the end of the day, you yourself will be the one who will decide whether you'll follow your desires negatively or positively. Albert Bandura Social Cognitive Theory Albert Bandura takes chance encounter and fortuitous events seriously even if one recognizes that these meetings and events do not alter one life path. The first assumption. People are flexible and can learn variety of different ways, either through personal experience and by cars. The second assumption. People use regulated by their environment behavior and personal. The two main environmental forces are chance encounter and fortuitous events. The third assumption. Social cognitive theory means people are able to control the nature and the quality of their life. They are producers and products of the social system. So I think this is an important part meaning they believe the ability to perform, also proxy agency and collective efficiency play a role predicting performance. Proxy agency is relying on others for goods and services collective. Efficacy means belief in people collective, ability to come up with the change. The fourth assumption. People control their actions through internal and external factors. 
internal self-evaluation, and observance, personal judgment, and how they react to things, external meaning ones, physical and social environment. The fifth assumption. When people find oneself in a new environment, they behave based on moral agency, including refining or changing behavior, ignoring and learning the consequence or behavior to ignore the consequences of one's behavior. Periodic cautions assume people's actions are determined by environment, behavior, and person. This is the BEP triangle diagram. Cognition is partially determined by one's environmental events and how they react to, to them and how can they react in the future. Tragic reciprocal causation is where B represents behavior, E external environment, and P person, either gender, social status, size, and etc. He uses reciprocal because there is an interaction tragic, intersection of forces, all three, the three forces can be of different, strength. Hi, my name is Joyce Anlokot and I'm here to discuss the self-process of identification of William James. William James is a, is a father of American psychology. In 1980, he, dist he distinguished two understanding of the self, the self, as, the self as me and the self as I. And this he called the self-process of identification. Ano nga ba ang pinagkaiba ng I-self I and me-self? I-self is a metaphysic or physically it's concerns with existing of self. Big sabihin, the self prepares to the self that knows who he or she is. Alam mo kung sino ka. This, this is the thinking, acting, and self, feeling self. Everything in your mind is the self. Also, it reflects the souls of person or what is now thought of as, as the mind and is called the pure ego. While the me self no man is the existence of the self, its empirical self, it is about describing the person's personal experiences and, and is divided to further categories tulad ng material self, social self, and spiritual self. Kasi dito, we are concerned about the experience. Ano ulit ang pinagkaiba? Sa I-self, you are concerned about the existence of the self. It involves the, the thinking and the feeling of self. On the other hand, yung me-self is concerned about experience of the self. This is empirical. At yun ang pinagkaiba ng I-self and me-self ni William James. Let's end our discussion about the self-process of identification of William James with the quote, quotes from himself. Sabi niya, a man's self is the sum, sum total of all he can call his, not only his body and his psychic powers, but his clothes and his house. Bakit niya nasabi yun? Balikan natin yung discussion kanina. Sabi niya, yung self daw can be divided into two. So kasama doon ang psychic power na tinutukoy niya dito sa existence. Or this, this, the I self and of course yung body or yung clothes in his house would be the me self which is about the experience included yung material self. So sabi niya, self is the sum of all that he can call his and that's all good day everyone i am jasmine gil as and pedro and i am going to discuss the real and ideal self what do you think is the difference between the ideal and the real self 
But before that, let's get to know first Carl Rogers. Carl Ransom Rogers was a very influential humanistic psychologist, described self-actualization and continuous lifelong process whereby an individual self-concept is maintained and enhanced by a reflection and the reinterpretation of various experiences, which enable the individual to recover, change, and develop. Also, according to him, the human organism has an underlying actualizing tendency, which aims to develop all capacities in ways that maintain or enhance the organism and move it toward autonomy. Carl Rogers also believes that a person to be self-actualized must be in a state of congruence. This means that Self-actualization occurs when a person's ideal self is congruent with their actual behavior or self-image. So let me ask you this. What is the real and ideal self? Real self is what you currently are and it is composed of such things as the way you think, the way you act, how you look, and who you actually are. In other words, the real self is real, practical, the very person that one is. Then here is the ideal self. Ideal self, which is we would like to be. Over time, you decided upon values you embodied, and you admire certain people and wish to be like them. For example, May isang tao na mainitin ng ulo at yun yung real self niya. Pero kung ipapakita niya na mahinahon at magpa mapagpasensya siya sa ibang tao, then ito yung ideal self niya. Or another, a person is short and flabby but thinks she is tall and slender. And then that is her ideal self. Or in other words, Ideal self is ideal, imaginary, or belief about oneself. Additionally, the term real is something permanent, while the term ideal pertains to something that is suited for a purpose. And before I end this discussion, I want to leave this to you. Don't act like your ideal self. But be yourself and create an opportunity to be that ideal person. What is then a real and ideal self? Everyone has specific goals and ideal self that he has for himself and tries to work consciously to be a better person and cut shorter the distance between the real self and the ideal self. What is real self and ideal self? Real self is what the person is from inside or the original self. The term real is something permanent, while ideal self is what a person wants to become. It consists of the goals and ambitions in life that is dynamic and forever changing. How do you define self? Your self is your basic personality or nature, especially considered in terms of what you are really like as a person. This is the image of the person, both in terms of one physical or body images, and psychological traits. Example of real self and ideal self. A person is hot tempered, that is his real self. But if he shows his same temper in situations, then that is his ideal self. Another example is when a person is short and flabby, but thinks she is tall and slender, then that is your ideal self. If one always thinks of the discrepancy, person's real and ideal self, the greater the frustrations and stress one feels. To sum up, a person with an ideal self is a dreamer who will dream everything in life and be happy. On the other hand, a person with a real self does not dream but he sees life in all its reality.
Good day, my name is Rachel Vico Anshan and I'm here to discuss the topic about the true self and the false self. There are two concepts that was expounded by Dr. Donald Winnicott, which are the true self and the false self. True self and false self are concepts in psychoanalysis introduced by Dr. Winnicott in the year of 1960. Ang true self raw ay ang tunay na imahe ng sarili natin base sa tunay na haranasan. Idinagdag pa ni Dr. Donald Winnicott na ang true self raw ay pagkakaroon ng pakiramdam na buhay ka at naririto ka ngayon sa kinatatayuan. On the other hand, ang uh, false self naman ay kilala rin sa tawag na social mask. Dinescribe ni Dr. Winnicott na ang uh, false self ay isang defensive facade or social mask not only for the purpose of adapting to different environments but also to interact better depending on the people they are with. Sa so, false self, dito nagpapakita ang isang individual ng iba't ibang personalidad o katauhan, depende sa kung sino ang kaharap nito. Ito ay maaaring pamilya, kaibigan, katrabaho, o di kaya ay kakilala. People always make adjustments to the way they present themselves based on the people they are around. Ang false self ay nadadevelop sa early stage pa lamang ng isang bata. Sinasabi ni Dr. Winnicott na ang mga bata ay kumikilos ayon sa gusto at kailangan nila at dahil bata pa lamang sila, nagre-relay sila mostly sa parents or guardians nila. Um, halimbawa na lamang nagsasabi ang isang bata ng kanyang gusto, uh, like gusto ko ng yakap or gusto ko ng atensyon o di kaya naman kailangan ko ng tulong. Sa parting ito, ipinapakita niya ang true self niya dahil hindi siya natatakot magsabi at ipakita kung ano ang tunay niyang gusto o kailangan. So, bilang magulang o nag-aalaga sa bata, it is their responsibility to fulfill the needs or wants of their child. However, kung hindi matutuganan ng maayos ang pangangailangan ng bata at hindi na-address o na-validate ang feelings nito, mararamdaman ng bata ang neglect. At dito madadevelop ang false self persona. At madadala niya rin ito hanggang sa kanyang paglaki. On the other hand, imbis na sabihin ng bata na kailangan ko ng tulong or gusto ko ng yakap or naman gusto ko ng atensyon, ang maaari niya nang sabihin sa susunod ay kaya ko na ang sarili ko or hindi ko na kailangan ng tulong ng ibang tao. Mainly because they are afraid that they will seem weak to other people so they will have the defensive facade or social mask that Dr. Winnicott mentioned in his study. Ang pinakamakapagpaliwanag rito ay dahil iyon sa na-experience na ng bata ang neglect o pagsasawalang bahala ng taong inaasahin niya na magbibigay sa kanya ng tunay niyang gusto. Sa kagustuhang hindi na maulit ang neglect na ito, patuloy na lang na paninindigan ng bata ang kanyang false self persona. Sa kabilang banda, ang um, true self, um, uulitin ko, ito yung pinapakita mo talaga kung ano ka or kung sino ka. Sa kabilang banda, ang false self ay makakatulong sa isang individual upang makisama sa iba't ibang grupo ng tao. Maaring mga katrabaho, kahilala, kaibigan o pamilya. Nakakatulong ang false self sa pakikisama and isa sa purpose of social interaction ay ang matuto ang isang individual na mag-adjust at makibagay ayon sa environment na kinalalagyan niya. So, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. The Proactive and Agentic Self According to Bendura, we humans, through our agency, are perceived as agents of experiences. Agency generally means how you assess yourself based on your capabilities, strength, and weaknesses. Through this agency, we play a big role in our self-development, belief, and self-limitations. Bendura defines this human agency as human capabilities to exert influence over one's functioning in the course of one's action. There are four core categories of human agency, intentionality, forethought, self-reactiveness, and self-reflectiveness. Intentionality, it is the act that we do intentionally, or the act that we do based on our own free will. When we act, Intentionality, 
we already know the possible outcomes. For example, you decided to sleep early and your intention is to wake up early. For thought, it enables a person to anticipate or predict a future outcome. For example, you you notice that it is raining outside and you anticipate that your class might be suspended or not. Self-reactiveness, it involves making choices and choosing the right or appropriate actions for the situation. For example, during your examination, you don't know the answer and it is your decision to copy your classmate's answer or not. Self-reflection, it gives us the ability to reflect upon ourselves, our actions, and our thoughts. In everything that we do, we must reflect in our experiences because these experiences will help us become a better person and it will guide us to the dream that we want to achieve. Human agency is done through different manners, personal, proxy, and collective agency. Personal agency is exercised by individually and the process by which a person can affect what she or he can control directly. Proxy is indirect. This is when the person do not have the direct control over conditions or aspect of the functions of the agency. They hire a person or give the authority to an individual that has the knowledge or can achieve the goal that they desire. Collective agency is an independent human functioning that is enacted when people share common belief and act to produce effect by collective actions. The understanding of social behavior is the cultural beliefs about how a person relate to a group, namely individualism and collectivism. So what is individualism? Individualism is a philosophy of life emphasizing the priority of the person's need over a group. It is a preferred social relationship that is caring for oneself and the family members only and the desire to be autonomous or independent from each other's influence. Individualistic cultures stress that people should be able to solve problems or accomplish goals on their own without having to rely on assistance from others. People are often expected to pull themselves off by their bootstraps when they, are, when they encounter setbacks. This tendency to focus on personal identity and autonomy is pervasive part of a culture that can have a profound influence on how a society functions. For example, individualistic cultures are more likely to value their own well-being over the good of the group. In individualistic culture, people are considered good if they are strong, self-reliant, assertive, and independent. A few of individualistic cultures include being dependent upon other is often considered shameful or embarrassing second independence is highly valued third individual rights take center stage fourth people often place a greater emphasis on standing out and being unique fifth people tend to be self-reliant and lastly the rights of individuals tend to take a higher precedence. A few countries that are considered individualistic cultures include the United States, Germany, Ireland, South Africa, and Australia. Another perspective called collectivism, which represents preference from a tightly knit social framework in which a person can expect their family and other relatives of the social group to look after them in exchange for unquestionable loyalty. The loyalty of the family is highly stressed. People in collective culture might sacrifice their own comfort for the greater good of everyone else, 
Such differences can influence nearly every aspect of behavior, ranging from the career a person chooses, the product they buy, and the social issues that they care about. People and collectivist culture might be more likely to turn family and friends for support during difficult times. For example, individualist culture stress the importance of each person taking care of his and herself without depending on others for assistance. Those in collectivist culture may instead stress sharing the burden of care with the group as a whole. This contrasts with the collectivist culture where characteristics like being self-sacrificing, dependable, generous, and helpful to others are more greater importance. Multiple selves. It states here that a person's perception about his or her self is being influenced by the judgment of other people, by the other persons in his life, and also by what is his or her ideal self. A person has a complicated self when he is surrounded by a different social group. For example, a person has a different personality or behavior when she or he is with her family. She may be an angel inside a house but when she is with her best friends or close friends she might be a cheerful type of person and when she is with not so close friends she is the silent type so that so that is multiple selves a person's behavior was influenced by the social group she is with or she is belonged to so we have a quotation here first understanding and embracing one's true self one's identity are critical over a lifetime, a person gets truly distorted by false messages in one society. Negative messages conveyed in a pain painful relationships and of one's own mis misunderstanding and misinterpretation mis misinterpretation of one's of life's events. So yeah, it's true for some person. It is hard to love their true self. Why? Maybe because they have all imperfections, so they are afraid of being bashed or bullied, they are ashamed, or maybe because they have insecurities, envy, and jealousy towards others. It is indeed hard for someone to love his or her own self, especially when he or she is surrounded by negativities, negative people, negative events in life, and other negativities that might happen to a person. That's why they tend to try changing their behaviors when they are into different social groups. Development and characteristic of the self-concept As a child grows, his or her fundamental co cognitive part of self also develops. This is known as the self-concept. Self-concept is a knowledge representation about a person's belief, personality, physical characteristic, values, goals, roles, and knowledge, that, and the knowledge that she or he exists as an individual in a society. We have here the word self-schemas. It means that as the self-concept developed and became more complex, it is then organized into different cognitive parts. According to Harker, year 1999, a person has self-schemas about their academic performance appearance, ability at sports, and other aspects that, and these information subschemas inform their processing of self-relevant information. An individual's self, sense of self grows dramatically as they grow old, from being a child to an adult. This is because they are now exposed to many social experiences which plays a vital role in developing the sense of self. In addition to this, their self-schema goes farther and wider. It means they, it becomes wider. It makes them realize that people have variety of thoughts. In this case, they became more aware of their own self-concept. They became more considerate and responsible for the possible outcomes of their actions. They became 
more away are able to plan their future and this allows them to modify their behaviors and not to make the same mistakes again in the future. So, how was it? Did it help you find your lost self? If you did so, well, we're happy for you. But if not, maybe you need more time to see, to feel, and to experience these theories on your own. Sooner or later, you'll find the missing piece of your own puzzle. Always remember, that no matter who you are or where you're from, always choose to love yourself more than anything else because you are a precious masterpiece.